Sup boys and girls, Tweety here, playing a new game, Stanley Parable. Uh, interesting. Although I'm hovering over... Oh, okay, I see. Huh. Interesting. Weird. Huh. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, uh, not exactly sure what this game's all about, but we're going to find out. Uh, so let's get started. Never the end. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee Might need number 427. That 427. Job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee <laughs> 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Hey, if I'm getting paid, why not? And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Okay, so we are 427. Uh, nope, this might be a spoiler if anybody wants to play the game. This game is on Steam. It was pretty cheap, only about 15 bucks. So, 11, 24. 428, can I, no, left click, nothing, 429, door shut. All of his co-workers were what? gone, what could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room, perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Okay, meeting room, why is there papers all over the floor? Where, where is the meeting room? What? No. Coffee spill. Oh, is this it? If it is, I can't get in there. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. What? What? He's telling me what to do. But maybe I want to enter the door on my right. Now I'm confused. Can we sit? Oh. Hmm. Why not? Let's do what he says. Oh, there we go. Meeting room. Yet, there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. How to solve a di dispute with a co-worker. Oh, hey. Using slides to ensure that everything's okay. <laughs> what does this say? What is hot?
by quarterly post -read. work harder work hard worker <laughs> throw something in the ideas bin <laughs> okay broom closet can I go in here oh <gasps> I can go in here there's something new Stanley stepped into the broom closet but there was nothing here so he turned around and got back on track hey there might be something here There was Click. nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. <laughs> no reason to still be here. Why? I want to be here. Okay. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Hey, I'm not doing what he tells me to do. Uh -uh. Who was this? Firehouse. Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered <laughs> the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange what observations. The? For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? The <laughs> doors closed automatically behind him wherever he went. And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is what all the? a dream. Oh, what the? What a relief Stanley felt to have finally found what? an answer, an explanation. Uh. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon and <laughs> oh go God. back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above Whoa. the ground. Ah. <laughs> he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It Whoa. was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest <laughs> question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. Okay, back. Oh, I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very <laughs> odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? Believing what the that hell is going on? He doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been. Oh, my before. God. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. So he closed <laughs> his eyes gently. Uh -oh. And he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin. The press of the mattress on his back. The fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, mm -hmm. it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. 
everything will be fine. I am okay. Crap! <laughs> Stanley uh. began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must oh be. Oh my Can God! Hear my voice? <laughs> Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Oh God! This is the story of a woman named Mariella. What the? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this I hope the game is not over. Better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. Uh -huh. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Okay, never the end. Yep, back here, 427. <laughs> All of his co-workers were gone. What could uh -huh. it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Alright, let's try... going to the right... here. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Let's go to the right. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to Ooh. admire it. Yeah, that sounds good. Employee lounge. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply Take stood here, drinking it all in. I want some coffee. Give me some coffee. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first mm. open door on his left. Oh, I don't know what to do. <laughs> do I do what it tells me to do, or do I... I not. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. Uh... Uh... Okay. Uh, I really don't like being told what to do. But I want to play the game. <laughs> uh, okay, let's. Okay, here's the meeting room. Yet there was not a single person Tips here. Tips for not either. getting fired. Talk less. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley Dude, decided to go up to his boss's office, amazing hoping work. he might find an answer there. <laughs> Take out passive aggressively. Yeah, take it out passive aggressively. Okay, let's go to the boss's office. Stairs. Coming to a staircase, Stanley up. walked upstairs to his boss's office. Can't go in there. Ooh, man, these are nice. Why can't I have this room? What does it say? Executive bathroom? Nope. Can't open it. Uh. That's locked. 
Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Ooh, what's that? Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. Okay, and so let's the boss had assigned it, it an extra secret pin number. Two eight four five. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing <laughs> random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code oh. by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passage. Oh, hello. Okay, weird. Very weird. I'm just glad there's no monsters jumping out at me. Oh. Sparks. And we're going down. Loading. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Alright, so what, what the heck is going on? Stanley walked straight ahead through the what? large door that read Mind Control Facility. Super dark. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Well, we can't go back. So I'm guessing these turn on. Cameras. Now the Whoa. monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Hmm. Very interesting. Fired. Hmm. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been Whoa. manipulated to accept it blindly? No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire the life is... oh, there utterly it is. blind to the world? God, I can't even but see. Here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content walking eating working all of it monitored and commanded from this very place wow and as the cold reality of his past began to sink in stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life for he would dismantle the controls once and for all I don't know how to disable the controls. <laughs> Very interesting. Weird game. 
But uh, I think that's it for this episode. Uh, I think I'll stay and play another. But uh, you'll have to wait until next episode for that. Uh, so like it if you like it, dislike if you didn't like it, let me know what you liked or didn't like about it in the comment section. And we will see you next time. But until then, I'm out of here.